And hey there, everyone, and welcome to another Wide Open Talk Show. This is Wide Open Talk Show for Wednesday, uh, April the 13th, uh, 2016. And I I have my co-host with me, Samuel Lewis. Um, how's it going? We had to skip two days, Monday and Tuesday. We did. You had to set your lawn on fire on Monday. I did. I did. Um, and, and then I had a doctor's appointment on Tuesday which it's a good thing we didn't plan to do that earlier in the, or later in the day because it wouldn't have worked anyway. I sat in that doctor's office for two hours past when I was supposed to go in. Ooh. <laughs> I, was, I was getting livid, especially considering I figured they were going to do blood work, so I just went ahead that morning and didn't eat didn't anything. Eat. <laughs> yeah. So I got something to eat finally for the first time that day at about, Mm, four o'clock that day <laughs> so it, it wasn't fun yeah uh, i was i was i was rightfully grumpy by the time that rolled around no i can i can appreciate that i know my mom's told me multiple times where she'll have an appointment at like two in the afternoon and she'll tell me that they finally get out of the doctor's office at 7 p.m Mm -hmm. And she even apologized whenever she got around to me because she had a lot of new patients. I was apparently the easiest new patient because I had seen her, but she's changed offices since. So they've got a new system. She's partnered with someone else, things like that. So she had to sort of run me as if I were a new patient um, because I've been slacking off for a long time and not doing this because this was what I went. Well, I went for maintenance. You know, just getting your standard blood work, making sure everything's still going okay. Stuff I should have been doing long ago, but I'm finally get biting the bullet and getting back on it, right? Yeah. But but yeah, it'd been a while, so I had to be run as that, and it's it was just it, apparently everything's fine, and I'm going to find out about my blood work on Friday. So otherwise, uh, it it started out as a good day though, given I had an appearance on a certain show that both of us listened to. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought that was, uh, I thought that was interesting. Uh, so mm -hmm. how did that go? Oh, it went great. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop being vague. I don't know why I was vague in the first name place. Um, but over on the Frog Pants Network, there is a show called The Morning Stream and it does it live. That's one of the reasons why we don't do it kind of early is because we're not really wanting to buck against those guys. We love them to pieces. Um, and they would cream us. <laughs> they would, yes, <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, Brian Ibbon and Scott Johnson do a show called The Morning Stream. And one of the segments, and it used to be called Stump a Trek Nerd, but now they've moved it to General Trivia, where they will call a guy named Daryl Skeels. He's from uh, some shows, This Week in Trek and The Grumpy Cast, I know are the two shows that he does regularly. Uh, but they will then try to stump him with a piece of random trivia. They added a little wrinkle to it since then where one of the people listening can call in mm -hmm. and actually predict whether or not he's going to get it right or wrong. And if they predict correctly, they win a prize. So I won myself a track from an Andrew Allen album. So I'm going to have that coming to me whenever Ibbett gets around to it. I sent him the email. He said he saw it. He's just got to get around to it. So, But it was fun. I It was fun being part of that segment. And getting to explain my name to them because <laughs> Ebbett said, did you ever explain to us what that stands for? And I explained to him, he said, you, you still didn't under explain what the letters were for. <laughs> you know, so we get, it was, it was this nice little back and forth I had with them. You can find it on episode. I've actually got it downloaded on my podcast thing. Cause I might be planning on capturing it later for posterity. Um, of course you should. But but episode 1019 called No Scooters. So it's the first segment on there after they tell some very interesting stories like they usually do first thing on the episode. So, oh, yeah. So after Scott and Brian tell a story, you'll hear a certain person on the telephone because I wasn't in the studio, so I couldn't give them mic quality. Yeah. But otherwise. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of them, actually, a lot of the, of the people that call in actually call in on the phone. And I... I so much prefer whenever they actually call in on Skype because it's mm -hmm. definitely better quality. But you know what? You you do what you got to. I mean, it's just like our show. Our show's a call in show. Matter of fact, that number, which I forgot to even <laughs> say, is two two nine five one eight three five two five. And uh it's only good when we record this show. 
So if you don't call between the hours of 2 and 3, 3.30-ish Eastern Daylight Saving Time, Monday through Friday, then, well, it's not going to work. <laughs> so anyway, uh, well, I had, a, uh, I had an interesting start of the week, uh, not the type that I would necessarily care to repeat, mm. but uh, I discovered Monday morning that my car had been broken into, and I... And and I I have to put broken in air quotes uh, because I made the mistake of leaving my car unlocked. And it had actually been unlocked all the way from Friday afternoon whenever I got home from visiting uh, my one of my <clears throat> IT clients for the last time. And I just never thought about going back out and locking the doggone thing. You know, it, one thing led to another. Lee and Oriana got home, then we had supper, then I was hanging out with you guys, playing video games, and then I went to bed. Uh, normally, I don't do that. Normally, I'm very particular about locking my car and not leaving valuable stuff in the car, like mm -hmm. my laptop, which was in my laptop bag. And uh, it just so happened that I, I never needed it Saturday. I never needed it Sunday. Um, never took the car anywhere those two days. We just, we typically don't go a lot of places on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Monday morning, whenever I was burning basically my backyard. And for clarification, I was raking <laughs> yeah. up huge piles of pine straw. It was only right there at the end that I said to hell with it and set the rest of the yard on fire. And it was around a big tree. And anyway, I was getting tired. Yeah. So my earbuds that I normally use with my phone, I keep in my bag. So I, and my bag normally stays in the bedroom right next to my desk, right in front of my briefcase. So I'm like, okay, I go into the bedroom and lo and behold, bag is not there. So Donovan scratches his head like, how did you not notice that this bag was not here all weekend? Ha ha, you left it in the car. Okay, no problem. <laughs> Grab the keys, go out. Didn't realize that I didn't have to unlock the car. I should have. But uh, opened the back door and no bag. And I'm like, did I put it in the studio? So I start running all these scenarios through my brain. Did I leave it at the last client I was at? And, of course, I asked them to look around. And, of course, it wasn't there. And long story short, eventually figured out that... It had been stolen, and I actually contacted the local sheriff's department yesterday morning, um, and I did it through the contact page on their website, of all things, uh, because I was curious. I was like, is it even worth, and this is exactly what I said, well, exactly, you know, is it worth reporting when I've had $300 worth of equipment stolen from my car at my home? And I put my name, my telephone number, and my address. Two minutes later, I'm getting a call from the sheriff's department. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, um, matter of fact, we may know who did it. And come to find out, um, I was not the only uh, house or car <laughs> to be burgled, 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 burgled. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. That would be it. <laughs> burgled. Uh, Friday. Apparently, it happened Friday night. Probably... Not so long. I left. I walked out of the studio around somewhere between 11 and 11.30. So either they were ballsy enough to walk up and, and get the stuff out of my car while I was out here in the studio, or they did it sometime after I went inside. I'm not sure which. But uh, the uh, sheriff's department arrested some folks, and late yesterday afternoon, uh, I was informed that they have my bag, my laptop, a few other things. Some th some some things are missing. Like there was a yeah. a switch, which you know, if it was a two thousand dollar switch, number one, I'd have to be having to check my sanity on why I'm carrying around a two thousand dollar <laughs> switch in the floorboard of my car. Right. But no, it's a small little eight port. You know, if you get in a situation at a client client's location and they have they're having switch issues, you can toss that in there and see if that solves a problem. That kind of thing. Right. So anyway. Um, I talked to him this morning because he needed my license plate off my car, and he said hopefully he'd get back with me later this afternoon and, and let me know when uh, when they uh, will be able to get my stuff back to me. 
I don't know awesome. if he's going to be able to bring it to me or if I'm going to have to go to the sheriff's department. I really don't want to go to the sheriff's department, but <laughs> I mean, I've been in there before. Back when I worked for the city, we, you know, we had an agreement with the county. So we were, I've been in that place before, but I just, I don't like law enforcement offices. Not that I, I'm on the wrong side of the law. It's just, there's usually people that are of less character, not the officers, but the people that are being <laughs> brought in or, you know, incarcerated or whatever in there. So this isn't Gotham City here we're talking about. So <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Where ninety percent of all the officers are on the take. Right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I guess ha- happy ending to the story somewhat. Uh, the moral of the story is. Always lock your vehicle and always take your valuables out of your vehicle. Even if you do lock it, I don't care if it is behind a closed garage door, which, by the way, I don't have a garage door. I have what's called a car port because mm. it's open, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, it's open insofar as there's shelter because Tyler's room's right above it, but I don't have a door that lets down. So there was that. So it, it really got my <laughs> week off to a a funky start, not one mm. that I was very happy with. Oh, yes, you were quite livid, I remember. So, <laughs> yeah. so so I'm glad everything came back. As soon as you told me that they'd caught him, I was crossing my fingers going, please find that bag for him. <laughs> yeah, because I've been having a stress headache that I can't get rid of, and now it's gone down into my shoulders, which it, I still have it. But anyway, you know, we're one day closer to to the weekend, so that's good. Mm. Um. So we got some things that we can talk about. Let me see if I can get the right. Uh... That is not the right input. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. We'll do it live. <laughs> that is freaking awesome. Wow. Okay. Doom, doom. And why is it doing it like that? Oh, never mind. Got it. Yep, we're doing it live. <laughs> <laughs> we we are doing it live. Okay. Anyway, Top Gear. Um. Am I mistaken, but you you like Top Gear, right? Oh, yeah. I like Top Gear from the uh, original three days, and I will give the new Top Gear a shot. I'm not going to be the one, the ones that goes, oh, well, it's not them anymore, so I'm not going to pay attention to me, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> um, but I'm a fan from the Clarkson, or let me put it this way, Jeremy, Richard, Hammond, and James. Those are my three Top Gear presenters. The The American Top Gear never caught my attention too much. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've been told they do a good job, but it just never caught me like those three are. I really don't think anyone can replace those three, which is great because now they're going to be doing an Amazon show about yeah. cars. So they're still going to be at it, just not for the BBC. Uh, and they'll probably get more freedom as a result. But <laughs> anyway. Um, probably so. But I had no idea until I looked at the document that this was even something that was going on. The latest I had heard about it was that Matt LeBlanc was going to be one of the presenters and Chris Evans, not that one. (laughs) Yeah, that see, that threw me right there when I first saw the headline. I was like, Chris Evans, boy, he's taking a step down. (laughs) But no, it's a it's a radio presenter named Chris Evans. It's not like he doesn't get that joke constantly anyway <laughs> I imagine so uh he's a well-known presenter at the time i had seen him before i just didn't realize that was his name if that makes any sense uh but yeah there's they're they're putting together a co- a good crew for it and it's it's going to be interesting to see it happen but this this is a bit interesting and I would have I would have again contacted my UK contacts if I had known ahead of time that this was a thing instead of a couple of minutes before the show, right? Uh-huh. Uh but apparently they're they're wanting to bring stunts back into it, which is something that they did on and off in Top Gear. Um after I think after Richard Hammond had his huge crash which almost killed him. 
Mm. Uh, I think they sort of dialed back on stunts, as it were, at that point. It was like, okay, guys, if we're going to do this, we need to have the Stig do it. Which, which interesting thing. I wonder if it's the same person being the Stig or not. Oh well, anyway. What is the Stig? Um, oh, uh, if you if you switch back over that, the guy standing there with just the white outfit to the very right of the picture. Yeah, that is the Stig. Well, who is he? Does anybody know? That's the thing. There there have been multiple Stigs, and some have been revealed and some haven't. Usually the Stig doesn't get revealed until he's ready to quit for obvious reasons. Um, but it's been – the Stig is usually – the qualifications for the Stig are a professional racing driver or stunt driver or something like that. The point is someone that's really freaking good at driving to where they can have them run these things at the top of their game. And usually the Stig's run – would be running whatever car of the week happened to be there across the track and seeing how fast he can get it across because he's a professional driver, so he's going to be able to cut corners, run it at its top performance, stuff like that, that the other presenters couldn't exactly do. Mm -hmm. Uh, So as a result, it was the Stig's job to really test a car, run it around the track, see how fast it can go, things like that. It was his qualifications. But the hilarious bit is the Stig never speaks. And they always build these hilarious legends around the Stig. Um, <laughs> in fact, in fact, the intros, you, you could probably look up. I'm sure someone has taken these intros and made a montage out of all of the crap that they said about the Stig. I can't remember any off the top of my head, but I, I could probably freelance one. Um, so some say... That, I can't believe I'm about to do this, but they were usually <laughs> political anyway, and this is the best one I can think of. They probably would have done this. Some say that the Stig is pl- that he's planning on building a wall against Donald Trump, and that that wall will be paid actually by Donald Trump. <laughs> wow. So that it was like Chuck Norris jokes, but elevated a bit, yeah. right? Um, and then it, they would give like three of them and then they'd say, all we know is he's called the Stig. And then it would switch over to him running whatever car it happened to be of the week to test it out. So, so you saw, you saw this trailer, right? I, I actually have not seen the trailer for the thing yet. I've, I've seen teasers on BBC America on and off, but I haven't seen the full blown trailer that came out recently. Well, I, I think this is it. So. It looks like Top Gear is still going to have its sense of humor. Um, oh, and and by the way, yeah, uh, it's interesting that they picked Matt LeBlanc because he does hold one of the records of going across the track because another thing that they would do, and I assume they're going to probably carry on the tradition, um, is they would put a star in their reasonably priced car, which I cannot remember what it was, but it's pretty much the type of car me and you would buy, mm-hmm. right? So it's not some supercar or something like that. It's just your average run-of-the-mill car. And they would have the Stig train these people a little bit, and then they would go around the track, and they had this board set up that had everyone's time. And people like Alice Alice Cooper is one of the fastest people that has ever gone around that track, (laughs) for instance. Um, Matt LeBlanc holds one of the records. Uh, Tom Cruise holds one of the records. So there's there's a lot of celebrities that have gone across that track, mm-hmm. and it's probably going to be the same track. But it's it's interesting for me, uh, and we'll probably talk more about this when the show actually premieres, right? 
where I'll get to see Top Gear and see how it is with new host. Because for me, it was always about the three presenters. Yeah. yeah. So to put someone else in that position, like I said, I'm not going to be one of the people that go, oh, it's not them. I'm not going <laughs> to, you know, but it, they're going to have to work to keep me on Top Gear. Let's put it that way. Well, the biggest issue here and what this particular article was was pointing out was the fact that they're seems to be no love loss between Chris Evans and Matt LeBlanc because mm-hmm. of this one of the this this stunt, this centifat, cent sin cenotaph, whatever mm-hmm. the hell that is. <laughs> it's apparently because I looked this up because I didn't know what it was. Uh, I did get the chance to do that much resource. It's apparently a veterans memorial. Ah. If I'm <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Which means that him pulling a stunt near a veterans memorial might not have been the best idea that anyone could have had. Um, and apparently, uh, I, there's other things where Matt LeBlanc has said that this wasn't a problem, while there's other things that have said Chris Evans says it is. So this this may boil down to one of those, the media just boiling a fake controversy up, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But... Um, who knows? It's the, it, it could be a tiff between the two of them. I mean, people that don't like each other have had successful shows before. It's it's almost a common point of duos in Hollywood and things like that at this point. I mean, Abbott and Costello had problems. Um, no. I'm, yeah, I'm diving back, right? <laughs> um, shoot. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin had huge problems and feuds, you know, right? So if we you even dip back that far and people like that. So it wouldn't surprise me if our, our more common one that we recently found out about, which again, as we said, was no shock. We talked about this on the show. Um, the Mythbusters, Adam oh, yeah. and Jamie, hating each other's guts, but just doing the show. So it's it's not like shows haven't been done with people disliking each other. This just may have been a rocky start. Yeah, and it's interesting you should bring that up because we actually do have that uh, on one of a, as a topic as to <clears throat> what it is that uh, Adam is now doing. Mm. That is, if I can get you know, I really wish sites would stop this. Uh, would stop this. Uh, oh, you know, uh, sign up for my newsletter kind of thing it's it's aggravating it is absolutely it's either a newsletter or a takeover of an advertisement or yeah. it's ridiculous yeah it is it's ridiculous and this is cinema blend and i love cinema blend because they have some decent decent articles about stuff and i find out a lot about what's going on in uh you know the 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 television and, and movie world but Every single time. I mean, I've even lied and said I'm, I've already subscribed. What does that? What does that even do? I mean, what if I had been telling the truth? The next time I go there, can I not get this this damn pop up over saying, "Will you please subscribe?" You know, w- will you please just kiss my butt? I mean, jeez. Ah, uh, but anyway. Um. So what this is? Uh, this article is talking about the fact that. Um, Says you might think the Mythbusters is over now that it's over. That series host Adam Savage might just be kicking back and taking a break from the spotlight. However, Savage has always been a pretty good showman, and it makes sense that he would want to remain on camera elsewhere. Uh, unfortunately for TV fans, that elsewhere isn't the Discovery Channel. Fortunately for those who have internet, however, you can watch him build to his heart's content over at Tested but this gig hasn't come without some cost. Now, mm-hmm. number one, I had no idea what, I had no idea what tested was. Ah, okay. Um, so is it a YouTube channel or what? It's a, it's a website that is mainly hardware focused. I've noticed um, they tend to, uh, my exposure to them has been limited to, but I have been exposed to them at least. Um doing hardware testing, things like that. Uh, do it yourself is a lot of what that website is about. So building your own stuff, things like that. DIY. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but in the realm of technology and hardware and stuff like that. This is this is a website in which I would not be surprised if you looked on there and saw if there was a guide to building computers, it would probably be there. So, um, and for a while, they did have Adam and Jamie doing stuff for them on Tested as well. So it does not surprise me that Adam would come to Tested after getting off of the Mythbusters. Yeah. They, uh... <clears throat> He's quoted here saying, uh, I have not existed in the last 14 years without Mythbusters. We filmed full time since 2002. For instance, my wife has never known me not having the show. So I'm finding a new life work balance right now. Mm. So um, the site apparently also added Swedish builder Simone Gertz to the team. And so now the two have built together in the in the time since then. Matter of fact, there's a YouTube video of them building a popcorn machine. So uh, let's see what this is real quick. What is that? <laughs> hey, Simone. Oh. <laughs> hey, Adam. How are okay, you? this part of the video. You can hear me loud and yeah. clear. Yeah. Excellent. The signal's coming through fantastically. I'm not looking at a houseboat anymore, am I? No, I'm unfortunately at my office, but it's pretty cool too. Is it nighttime? Is it dark outside? Yeah, it's cold, oh. dark, and depressing. Oh. Welcome to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like, let the right one in? Is that what it's like all the time? Yeah, but with less teeth. So you've got a project. You wanna, you, you've got a project. I don't know anything about it, except it fits on the head. I think you're really gonna like this one. So the idea is, okay. you know, like beer helmets. Yes, so you have I know two beer, beer cans on a helmet. And I was yeah. thinking if you could do that, but instead of beer, you have popcorn. So basically, I, I made this, and I wanted to like, it has like a little pipe, so it kind of funnels the popcorn down to your mouth, and it detects okay, if you is, open or close your mouth. And I made this very. This is twenty. Jeez. 23 minutes long, so we can't watch She's that. known for making devices like this. I thought the name rang a bell. Um, there have been, since, since I've been laid off, I've been able to watch the Night Attack pre-show now, because I'll be there live. Um, and wouldn't you know it, they played one of her videos uh, last week, I think it was, oh. where she, she makes these devices that are so bizarre and so impractical, but it's hilarious. She made a chopping device, for instance, was the one that they played, where you could put something under it. Don't put your arm under it. You'll lose an arm with this dang thing. <laughs> um, but she had these really sharp knives attached to a, a long s sort of beam system to where it would go up and down, and then using a motor, mind you, chop things. So she put an entire head of lettuce under it, and it decimated the thing. She put a watermelon under it, and it splattered all over the dang place. So she ends up making these robots, which are totally impractical. The whole joke of her thing is that, oh, no, these things won't be practical at all. I just want to make them just <laughs> for the heck of it, just so I can say I did it. So yeah. So she's known for that sort of thing. So her, her attitude to things with Adam Savage's way of having fun with things, oh, yeah. This is going to work. <laughs> this is totally going to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I can I can kind of uh, empathize. Well, actually, I can sympathize um, with having done something for so long, and then it's like, okay, you know, now it's over, and I, I, I still got to do something kind of like that, um, so what is it that I'm going to do? Mm. And And I think it's pretty cool that he's been able to to basically continue in that that same line. I mean, he's not doing exactly mythbusters, but he's still building things. Yeah. And as long as he's having fun and and getting paid, I mean, that's and, and entertaining people. I mean, that's what it's all about. Oh yeah. So, while we're sitting here doing this show, I have no idea cuz we're not entertaining, we're not getting paid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if you want to throw some Benjamins our way, we don't mind. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm kind of glad. Mm -hmm. I wonder what Jamie's going to be up to then, because I haven't seen anything about him. I suspect Jamie is more of the type that doesn't want to be in the spotlight too much. 
So he'll probably be up to something more behind the scenes. I mean, I could be surprised. He could come out with his own public project and be doing something, but I don't know. I just get the vibe off of Jamie that he's more of the type that after being in the spotlight for so long, no, I I just want to go and make things and not have anyone <laughs> look at me or make jokes about my mustache anymore or anything. I just want to go. <laughs> sort yeah, of well, he, he does have a funky stash. Mm. But, you know, that... That that's kind of become his trademark. So if he were to like shave it off, nobody would recognize him. Right. So um anyway, well good good about that. Um I have I saw this headline, but I have not played the video. Oh. So I don't know, but this is the perfect opportunity to convince your little sister of zombie apocalypse. I didn't watch it either, so we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll be doing a reaction video then, yeah. or a reaction podcast, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I got to watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Well, here it's we one go. One of those. <laughs> you ready? First, I'm not ready. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Any final words, Millicent? No. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Hmm. <clears throat> Why didn't it change over? That is awesome. It's like the the uh, the shot is frozen or something. Yeah, the shot just went up. Oh, no, sorry. We do it live. Mm. This is what happens when we start relying on video content. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. So um, let me click over to there and figure out. Huh. I know why. Thank you, Chrome. <laughs> You'll never believe it. I'll tell you after the video. Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm going to back it up. I'm not ready. I don't want to do this. Any final words, Millicent? No. <laughs> this is so mean already. Oh, I know. If you are ready and ride this out, we'll let you know. The Center for Disease Control in Washington, D.C. has issued a viral outbreak warning. State and local officials have reported cases of high fever, nausea, death, and even cannibalism. Stay in place until further notice. What the heck? Did you? Oh, oh, you're driving like a slug. You get to the house. Hold on, hold on. Mom's calling. Poor girl. So hey, did you, get, did you just get that emergency yeah. alert? Yes? You need to get home right now. Um, I got notice of the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> okay, okay, we're, I'm pulling the driver right now. What else is the U.S. Marines? Why can't we start going now? Okay, there's Barry. He's got the Jeep. Okay. Don't move. People if need you to, need to feel. defend yourself, I can't be with you the whole time, okay? Look, this is how you use it. Safety's right here. Pull this. Try I need you to see you do it, okay? You gotta hold it up if anything comes. Hold the weapon. Hold it up. No, hold it up. Hold it up, okay? You got it? Okay? I'll be right back. Oh, God. <laughs> what is this supposed to do for me? Give me a knife. <laughs> <laughs> Which pet? The cat or the dog? The cat! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's the worst! He's already dying! Just leave him! Okay, get we the cat! Okay, okay, I'll forget the cat. Mom said we're leaving the dog. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, 
Dad said that since he's in Las Vegas, that he's close to Mexico and he wants us to meet him in Mexico. How good is your Spanish still from high school? I, I, I can say pants. <laughs> Millicent, we can only take Fun Betty or chocolate cake. Which one do we take? Fun Betty. Fun Betty do you want Fun Betty or chocolate? Why do you mean that? Which? No, Millicent, no, this is important. This will be what we're living off of. Which one? I would Fun kick Betty their chocolate. asses once do you think Costco, this was done. Should we go to Costco first? Oh, yeah. No, it's gonna be a bloodbath in there. She's probably right. She's probably right. <laughs> Nelson, what about Mexico? Why do I have to be on this side? Nelson, what if... Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> the, I guess the middle brother or whatever, he almost couldn't contain it. He, yeah. was, he was about to lose it. So after driving around for five more minutes. Nelson, you know where we're gonna go? We're gonna go back home, and you're gonna get in bed. And you're gonna sleep for the next couple hours because there's no zombie apocalypse. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're gonna go let you get in bed. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We love you. We love you. I'm gonna turn a lot. Wow. Oh, God. <laughs> These guys need to have their butts kicked. Uh huh. <clears throat> they need to be put on George Wallace's list, right? Yeah. <laughs> God. I mean, and she was she was so impressionable, you know, having come out of that. I mean, I know what that's like. I've had my mm. wisdom teeth cut out. Yeah. And uh I mean, I I didn't have like the gas or anything. I actually was put under. Mm. And I'm not sure I would have believed that, but everything was everything was fine. Everything was fantastic to me until mm -hmm. about 30 minutes later, and the pain kicked in. <laughs> yeah, and then totally. I, 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 I would have wished the zombies had been attacking at that point. <laughs> well, where I was still epileptic at the time, I had this surreal experience where because I was on medication, yeah, they couldn't fully knock me out because there was a risk involved. So they had to numb me, and I got to watch them do it. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I remember I was, I was laying back, and I mean I was already nervous as hell. <clears throat> and uh, you know they put the IV in my hand, and I, I'm trying to remember I'd never had an IV until that point, and it didn't hurt. I mean it it was a little sting, right? And I remember laying back, and he was like, "Okay, <clears throat> count backwards, starting at a hundred. I think I got to 90. <laughs> and right. that was that was the last thing I remembered. Uh, and then it was almost like, you know, fade to black and then start slowly fading to light. But I couldn't yet open my eyes or see, but I could feel someone working in my mouth and I could hear people talking like way, way, way away. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I'm waking up in the middle of this. I need to uh -huh. let them know that I'm I'm. I'm not fully sedated. So in my mind, I'm trying to move my hands right. and, and my fingers to let them know, hey, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not under here. And, you know, come to find out that he was just, he was in the final stages of actually with the stitches and everything. And, right. you know, these guys are professionals. He had timed it just right. I was coming out of it at the perfect time. Mm -hmm. But all I could remember are those horror stories where you have, and I forget what it's called, but it's where they put you under, and you seem to be under. Oh no! Oh. But you can feel everything they're doing. Yeah. And so you're basically screaming in your own head as as they're cutting into you, and I'm like, oh hell no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't need this. <laughs> oh jeez, I'm uncomfortable just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <clears throat> So, uh, yes, producer, the stream, as far as I can tell, is still up. Everything is still green, green, green here. So, mm. but, uh, yeah, those guys, there's a special place in hell for them. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Little, uh, little World of Warcraft news. Mm. Um, I know you're not in a World of Warcraft player, but you're familiar enough with it. You know what it's all oh, about. Oh, yeah. I've got enough background radiation. Yeah. Um, so, of course, there's a... At their peak, 
World of Warcraft had somewhere around about 12 million players. I, I argue that it was closer to 14 because I remember those numbers around 07, 08, 09, somewhere in there when it hit its peak. And that was worldwide. Right. And uh, But there's been a lot of people that have been dissatisfied with some of the, the last expansions. And, you know, Blizzard has made things. They, they've tried to, to entice people to come in, like I think... Um, uh, um, not the last, I don't think it was the last expansion, but the expansion before that, the, uh, the mist of Pandaria, I think whenever you got it, you also, if you went ahead and pre-ordered and got into it, you also got Diablo three for free. I think that was the one might've been mm. the, I don't think it was warlords, <clears throat> but anyway, could have been warlords. I can't remember. Right. Point is there is a huge section of, of the gaming population, the, the wow lovers that really enjoyed and really want to go back to vanilla WoW. Right. You know, the the very first version of the game, and even Burning Crusade, which was the this the very first expansion. Mm. And of course these people can they can fire up these private servers. Um it's of course not sanctioned by Blizzard. Of course. And uh <laughs> sometimes they're kinda dodgy and and just they don't run very well, but uh Apparently, there was one, the uh, Nostalrius, which I think is how you pronounce it, because I'm, I'm think, I mean, it's French, and maybe nostal is it's supposed to be nostalgia, so that's right. where it comes from, Nostalrius. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they had a very successful private server running version 1.12 of the game, and the numbers that I have seen said there was about 150,000 active players with 800,000. Uh, accounts actually uh, registered. So over here on the uh, on the Nerdist website, they actually have because this thing had to sent, had to get shut down on the tenth of April because Blizzard basically sent <laughs> from two different law firms, American cease and desist. Yeah, <laughs> cease and desist. So um, I haven't played this. So here is. Here's the last minute with chat. Of course, this is over at Nerdist.com. Right. Of course, now for radio listeners, they're just, this is video of orcs running around. And other people. Okay. Yeah, I know. We got other people jumping about. <clears throat> We're at the Horde City. Why am I not surprised that this is, is from the Horde uh, point of view? Yeah, I've heard about that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, kind of reminds me of a good grief. That's a lots of folks. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised the server didn't melt mm. because the actual sanctioned servers have done that before. You get so many people in a particular area, it just knuckles under. <laughs> it is kind of sad. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, for it to be the last, okay, it said last minutes, but <clears throat> anywho. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. And and I had read about this, and of course, then I caught the segment on the uh, the instance. I think it was last Friday. Anyway, uh, Scott Johnson and Deals and uh, Garrick, he was on Garrett. there. Garrett, Garrett, yeah. they were talking about it, and uh, they all agreed that they really do like vanilla, and given an opportunity, that they would play. But they also understand that from oh, Blizzard's yeah. point of view. They got to protect their intellectual property, and uh, and of course, there's the argument from the side that says, "Well, I'll play on this server. I'll never play on one of your servers, so I'm not taking money away from you," kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, I guess you could go down that line of thought, but you know, it's it is what it is, right? Uh, ultimately, it's Blizzard 
playground. And uh, I think I would be one of those folks that I would really love it if Blizzard would say, okay, we've got all these assets. Um, let's just fire up a a, a 1.12 server. And if you've got a current ex- uh, subscription, then just click this server. And <clears throat> But I know it's not that simple. Right. Because yeah. the current game code uh, that is on a, a game player's machine is not the same game code that you could use to play 1.12. It's completely different. Oh, okay. Um, all the assets are different and uh, everything else. So it's, uh, it's kind of sad. I'll give it that. Well, you know Blizzard as a company, right? If they could do that, they probably would. But they've got all the technical limitations that you just laid out, so it's obvious why they haven't. But, again, this is Blizzard we're talking about. If they can do something for the community like that, they usually do. And it's probably those very technical limitations that have stopped them from doing this in the first dang place, right? Well, yeah. I mean, they've even said that, well, we can spend <clears throat> we can spend time, money, and resources on doing these other little things, or we can spend those resources, time, and money on creating new content for expansions and mm. and what have you. And that's the reason why they don't go back and make some of the changes in the existing game code. Um, I'm trying to remember some examples. Like that's the reason why it took it took so long to be able to fly in the original uh, content. Um, and what I mean by original content is like all of the Azeroth and <clears throat> in those areas that you you couldn't fly. And mm. flying wasn't introduced until Burning Crusade, I believe. And you could only fly in Outland. As soon as oh. you went back to, to uh, Azeroth, you couldn't fly. Ah, uh, okay. And it wasn't until I think maybe the next expansion after that, maybe uh, I think it was uh, Wrath of the Lich King, that they finally made it where you could fly. And their argument wasn't because of the flying mechanic. Their argument was they had not painted all of the all of the uh, parts of the cities that you would be able to see from the <laughs> <Okay>. air. <laughs> you know, they approached right. it from, from a ground level only. Whereas when they built Burning Crusade Outlands, they built it from the ground up with the knowledge that people would be flying around. So in those rare instances where you would be able to kind of find a loophole in the game and get up higher than you're supposed to, and you could look down on certain areas, you could see unfinished graphics. Mm-hmm. And this is the this is the sort of stuff we get to see when people do speed runs of games, right? Yeah. They run through the wall and go, well, see, that was just a facade because there's nothing back here because we're not supposed to be back here sort of thing. So, as you know, around our house, because we've been big WoW players ever since it came out in 2004, every single person, uh, and I say every single being my wife and my daughter, they would absolutely love to just go back and play the original WoW mm. and, you know, hit the 60 level cap. Uh, and it has, for me, and for a lot of people, it has lost its uh, luster and allure. And mm. that could simply be when a game gets that old. Right. You know, last week we talked about RuneScape. RuneScape has celebrated 15 years. I don't know... You know, the people that have been playing RuneScape for the last 15 years, how do they feel about the current state of the game? You mm. know, would they prefer the way the game looked pre-2013, or do, would they prefer how it worked uh, whenever the, the other, basically, redo of the game was? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot of folks that would like to be able to reset and wow and go back to Wrath of the Lich King because... Hands down, for many of us, that was the very best expansion. Oh, interesting. So, anyway, <clears throat> that is what it is. <laughs> um, Let's see. Bank robbers wrap up head to toe in aluminum <laughs> foil for heist. <laughs> I was so hoping we were going to talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... We got these bank robbers in southern Brazil, and they decided that they were going to don an unusual disguise uh, to pull off their their heist. 
They covered themselves from head to toe in aluminum foil for the early Saturday morning raid on the uh, Banco de Brazil branch in Praia Grande. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> so the police believed that the two were thinking that these outfits would beat the uh, bank's alarm system and stop it from sounding. Uh, spokesman for the Santa Catarina State's Military Police told Brazilian national newspaper O Globo they wanted to make sure the alarms didn't detect their presence by using the aluminum foil. Apparently, they've been watching too much television. <laughs> Astonishingly, though, the robber's plan appeared to work. Though it didn't give them the Harry Potter-style invisibility, they, uh, they were captured by the bank's surveillance cameras, so security staff working at the regional HQ alerted the police, and they were arrested on the scene. <laughs> means there was probably some sort of infrared sensing, right, for yeah. them to... And I'm sorry, they weren't, they weren't arrested. They arrived, and the duo fled empty-handed, leaving behind blowtorches and other implements that they were using to try to break into the safe. Mm. So, as of Sunday morning, they were still unaccounted for. But they did arrest one person that they think was the, uh, the lookout for the team. Can you imagine a bunch of well-dressed people sitting around a table... And George Clooney standing there at the thing. Okay, so here's how we get inside of it. We wrap ourselves in tinfoil. <laughs> it's, it's kind of Ocean's Eleven ask a plot like that, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I can't. You really have to wonder about the IQ of these people. I mean, I, t talk about although, 10 hatters. <laughs> well, yeah, but although we, we kind of have to give them a smidge of credit, if it weren't for those security cameras, they might have gotten away with this, yeah, right? Yeah. So stupid or not, it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is very true. Mm-mm-mm. Because when I started reading this, I fully expected it to go, and the alarm went off and everything, and then it said, and it appeared to have worked. And I went, what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I suppose <clears throat> if it's heat sensing, then aluminum foil can kind of cover for that. Um, mm. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not going to cover for surveil surveillance. I mean, there are those LED like uh, necklaces, and I don't think mm. this is this is BS. I think it's accurate that it throws off some security cameras where <clears throat> it does something with the light that all you see is like this this bright star like thing where the person's head is. Mm. And there again, I could just be completely going off of what I've seen on television shows like Castle and other things. It, mm -hmm. it may not even be real, but I'm thinking it was. So uh, you know, hey. Aluminum foil is a little cheaper, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see. What else we got here? Um, <laughs> have you watched any of the Underworld movies? I've watched one of them, and I can't remember which one. Because I really like them. <clears throat> I mean, there's there's been four of them. Right. Um, even though I wouldn't necessarily count the fourth one as as one of them, but you know, it's, you get these movies where you've got so many sequels, and then there's a, that particular one, you know, Highlander Two, that is not part of the <laughs> mythos. You know, everybody just forgets that it was ever made mm -hmm. because it is so horrendous. I won't say that Underworld Four was like that, but it just seemed cheaply done. And the storyline just didn't seem to work well. Um, but they're doing an Underworld 5, so maybe they can make up for it. Mm. Um, they have a new title. They, they finally came up with a title. And they've got a teaser poster. And Kate Beckinsale, who is a hottie, <laughs> uh, she's coming back to, to play the, the main character. Mm-hmm. And the title is going to be Underworld Blood Wars. So she's going to reprise her role as Celine, 
and Theo James is playing as Celine's trusted ally, David, and it's supposed to be in theaters just in time for Halloween, arriving of October 14th of this <laughs> year. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. The first, the first three movies were pretty good, and what was interesting about that was you had the first movie, which introduced this world and these characters, because these were all original, not based on a, a book or a comic book or anything like that. Right. Um, because uh, Lynn Weissman, who was the director of the first movie, and he and Kate actually wound up getting married. Right. Um, you know, he, along with two other people, came up with the story. Then you had the second movie, which was a continuation of the first movie. Then you had the third movie, which was a prequel, mm. which went back several hundred years to show how the war between the werewolves, or a.k.a. the lichens, and the vampires started. And it's kind of telling the story of something, uh, of a sort of a, not really a throwaway point in the first movie, but something that's mentioned in the first movie. And so they expand on that in the third movie and show you the actual story. So those three movies to me are really, really good. The fourth mm. one, I can't even remember what it was about other than <laughs> it was sometime in the future and Celine had either been in hibernation, underground, or something. And and I, I just don't know. Mm. So... It's I'm, really sad. Maybe I shouldn't be admitting this, but the one movie that I did watch of that, the only thing I remember from it was the sex scene. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's all I remember from it. But then it. that would be the second one. <laughs> that would be the second one because the first one really didn't have a, a sex scene that I can recall, but the second one, because uh, she was with the um, uh, she was with the hybrid mm. and they were running. And so yeah. uh, he had to... They had to find a place because the sun was coming up, and they had to get her. And she her. threw the paint on the yep, windows. Yep, yep, that's, yeah, okay. That's yeah, the that's second one. one. That that's was a, one. that was a hell of a sex scene. <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodness, goodness. Okay. According to our producer, we've been having video problems. I don't know why. As far as I can tell, the stream is is working but uh he said it is not so i told him to to go over and monitor on the audio channel and i don't know why like i said everything here is five by five not to be confused with five by five dot tv <laughs> i'm gonna check it out real quick and just see mm. yeah he's not wrong all i'm getting is the youtube splash screen mm. that's weird okay youtube thank you Thank you for being so reliable. Because <laughs> I know it's not me. Mm. Yes, I I see. That's got. I'll I'll play around with it after the show. Mm. I mean, I'm curious about a possibility. We're using YouTube streaming, right? Yes. We played some YouTube videos on a YouTube streaming thing, right? Is that against the TOS? <laughs> I don't know. I was just saying maybe they've got the whole content ID thing built into it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how Hangouts was. Remember the one time that you played a YouTube video for me on a Hangout we were doing and it cut us off because we were streaming live? Uh, yeah, I guess, you're, I guess you're right. Let me see what... Uh, let me log in to the account. This is some of that behind-the-scenes stuff. Mm-hmm. Log in and take a look. Go to the Creator Studio. Go to live streaming. Uh, yeah, it tells me this <clears throat> tells me that we're live. We've been okay. live for an hour and sixteen minutes, and that the uh, stream health is good. I don't see any I don't see anything in here that would throw it off. 
Okay, then that was just the only theory I had. <laughs> See, I'm. It's really aggravating because I don't understand it. I'll have to troubleshoot it after the fact, but because mm. all last week I was well, not all last week. I decided to use it. I get uh, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday show. Mm. And it seemed to be working just fine then. Anyway. Hey, sometimes you have problems. It says it's in beta. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So. Uh, if your live broadcast was terminated and you did not receive a strike, Content ID has identified copyrighted content owned by a third party in your video. Um, how that's interesting. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll just have to, we'll just have, you know, I wouldn't think that, I mean, come on folks, <laughs> you know, what's wrong with playing a YouTube video on a YouTube channel? I'm not, I'm not taking credit for it. I mean, geez, matter of fact, hey, I'll turn off monetization there. Does that make you feel better? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Why has it got to be so hard? I'm going to shut the stream off just real quick and then and then see. I know everybody listening to this right now is going, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I'm firing it back up because it said the stream is offline. Yeah, it's not letting me. That is weird. Okay. That mm. is weird. Yeah, it's in beta, so. <sighs> yeah, maybe it's them and not me. I'll have to go through and see if there's... Because right now I'm not seeing anything about uh, any information, any strikes or anything like that, so. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so <laughs> Underworld 5, looking, looking forward to it. <laughs> Well, I was going to talk about the, or at least, you know, maybe show the Doctor uh, Doctor Strange trailer, but um, I don't think I will now. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen it yet? Yes. Okay, I have too. Yep, I can saw talk it. about it at least. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I'm, I think I kind of echo, echo what you said about it. Um. In your Snapchat, you know, I'm I'm aware of Doctor Strange. I'm not like an aficionado of Doctor mm -hmm. Strange. Um, I thought it was fantastic that they got Benedict to to play him because he just, based on the comics, he just fits the the look of that yeah. part. And I love how. And I mean, granted, th this is a teaser trailer, so. Mm -hmm. They could give us more down the road, but I love the fact that they really didn't tip their hand. They kind of gave you the a little sneak peek of the beginning where you really do like, oh, I want more. I got to see this now. So I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So when's it coming out? I, d I don't know, actually, when it's coming out. Sorry, you totally roboted on me for a second there. Everything just went nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, that happens. <laughs> that ha I might as well. I'm going to turn the, the actual stream, uh, video stream off since it's not working. Mm. You're going to do me this way, YouTube. I'll go to another streaming provider. <laughs> I do have a certain thing in mind if I could contact them. I, I don't think they would care. <laughs> I don't think we're big enough to be on there. If it's what I'm thinking. <laughs> mm. I like their setup, though. <laughs> we'll see. Never <laughs> know. You never know. All right. Um, so, final words on Doctor Strange, and then I think we're going to get out of here because this thing is, is falling apart on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, no, I like it, especially, like you said, um, about it because it's the teaser, it's just teasing the origin, which is great for people like us that don't know much. All I know was he was a surgeon whose hands got ruined all of a sudden, so he was trying to have to find himself after that. Yeah. Then he becomes the Sorcerer Supreme as a result. 
Um, so it's it's going to be interesting seeing how this goes. I got to see it with the way that it was treated on the Jimmy Kimmel show because last night he got the exclusive rights to do it. Big surprise. He's the guy on ABC. Um, so, of course, the Marvel Disney movie would get give the rights to the late night talk show host that was on the same network they own. Of course. Um, but it was interesting how they did it, and I got to watch it with everyone on the Diamond Club stream last night because they did it as the pre-show. Uh, they had Andrew Main on and stuff like that. It was nice. Cool. Um, so they could all discuss it. And what happened was Jimmy Kimmel was standing in front of his background, then all of a sudden there was this ripple effect, and Benedict Cumberbatch's head shows up. So... On the background of Kimmel's stage, suddenly there's this mystical aura, and it's clear that Doctor Strange is tuning in to look at Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> that was what the whole bit was. And, and of course, Kimmel was being an idiot. You know, he likes to play the dumb one, right? That's sort of his biz. Like, oh, so you do this, right? And then he goes, no, no, I, I, do, I don't do parties. I'm these, these, these are things to stop beings from other dimensions coming through. They're not exactly child's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but you can make a balloon animal, right? And then he closed his eyes and went, <sighs> and then you heard, <laughs> and then he held up a balloon animal. <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately popped it and threw it off to the side. <laughs> Are you happy now? <laughs> wow. So it's just Doctor Strange himself showing up for a bit to show the beginning of the trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I guess one thing that I didn't realize in uh, in the trailer was the first time that he actually spoke. I went, wait, what? He spoke with an American accent. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize the character was going to be treated that way. Because honestly, I don't know his origins. I'm, I'm presuming that he was uh, an American in the comics. So. He is. He's American. I, I, I can't recall where he's from, but he's American. Yeah. So it's good that that they're doing that. Of course, you know, Brits have an easier time doing American accents than Americans have doing British accents. So, with the, with the distinct exception of several instances of in Doctor Who that we've both heard. So, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and of course, of course, Robert Downey Jr. does a very good uh, British accent because he, he did it in the uh, the Sherlock Holmes movies. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I didn't know better, I would think he was from across the pond. Mm. Which I still hold that those are good movies. Some Sherlock Holmes fans don't like them. Oh, but I, I love them. I think it did a good job with the character. You yeah. know me. I'm I'm protective of Sherlock Holmes. The only character that I'm more protective of is a uh, Perot, Hercule Perot. That's about the only character I am more <laughs> protective of. Both of them are detectives, but yeah, it's it's one of those things. But yeah, he did a good job and they did a great job with the character. I didn't think the fighting thing was off base because Sherlock Holmes fought. Mm -hmm. He really did. So, and I love the fact that they, they gave that angle where you could see that he is thinking it through. Mm, yeah. That, that to me, that just shows his deductive reasoning and his, his superior intellect of, okay, this is, I'm going to deduce that he's going to do this, this, and I'm going to do that. And he just goes ahead and works out in his head and then executes it flawlessly. Mm. So, all right then. Well, what you say we get out of here? Um, yeah, you got anything? You got anything? We still have a ship to stand on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all falling apart. <laughs> Batten down the hatches. Throw the 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 uh, women and children overboard. I mean, uh, get them in the uh, lifeboats. Anyway. Uh, so you got anything you want to plug? You Bruce Esme or something? Let's see how many people get that one. Um, but. But yeah, as usual, if you want to find all of my stuff, you can find it over at tscn.tv. Excuse me. Or find me more personally at about.me slash labtech7. So. All right. Sounds good. Well, we try to do this show every uh, Monday through Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And I say Eastern time right now. It's Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Um, and uh, we try to stream it live. Like we tried to do the day, you know, video <laughs> and audio. But apparently, thank you, YouTube. I didn't. I'll go and sit in the corner with my dunce hat on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. But uh, <laughs> anyway, check us out at slant.fm. And you can find my personal stuff at about.me slash GD Adkisson. So uh, until tomorrow, we'll be back at 2 p.m. on Thursday. 
which will be April the 14th. We're getting close to tax day, which mm. that has been moved this year from the 15th to the 18th. And, uh, mm. yeah, I I, uh, I wrote $600 worth of quarterly tax checks today. I was not happy. <laughs> anyway, uh. we will uh, be back with you tomorrow. So until then, take care. Bye-bye. is a production of the Slant FM Digital Network. Find more at slant.fm.